Okay, so good morning, everyone. So it's my pleasure to welcome you to this celebration of our associate professors. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Mark Lundstrom. I'm the Dean of Engineering this year. So it's a pleasure to be here. As I reflect back on 40 years as a faculty member, I think my time as associate professor was a very special time. So it's an opportunity to learn how to define a vision for important and original research, uh, how to raise the funds to support the work, how to mentor graduate students, how to produce and publish important results, and in the process, you earn the respect of your colleagues and peers. So it's a very special time. And uh, now you have an opportunity to re reflect on what you've accomplished and maybe accelerate along the same trajectory or, or maybe move what you've done into a new direction. So it's a, it's a special time in your career. Now, we're going to have uh, three presentations. We ask you to uh, present, I think, a 10-minute talk. We ask an awful lot in this 10-minute talk. We ask you to convey what you do in a way that is broadly accessible to experts outside of your own field. Uh, maybe tell us a little bit about uh, the educational activities and engagement that might be connected to your research. Uh, we're interested in the path you took to get to where you are today and maybe your vision for where you might be heading in the future. So with that, uh, I think we'll begin with our first speaker and I believe Abi is going to do the introduction. All right, well, thank you. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm delighted to have the opportunity to introduce Professor Vanit Agarwal. Um, Vanit uh, joined us in 2015 after a five-year stint at the AT&T Research Labs, uh, which he joined in 2010 after he finished his PhD at Princeton. Um, so he overlapped with Mung at Princeton, I believe, a little bit. Um, so. Uh, Vanit has been quite active since he has uh, come to Purdue, come to industrial engineering. He also has a courtesy appointment with uh, ECE. Um, he, had he also played a key role in starting the Intel Purdue Cybersecurity uh, Design for Security badge, uh, which fit nicely with his research area that he'll talk about. But his overall vision, uh, overall research area is in managing data and being able to make good decisions uh, when you have data that is distributed across networks. So with that, Vani? Thanks a lot. Oh, Thanks. you already have this. Yeah. All right. Hello, everyone. Um, so hello, everyone. Yeah, hello everyone. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the research and other activities that I've been doing uh, here. So as Abhi just introduced, um, uh, things about background. So I graduated in 2005 uh, with undergrad from IIT Kanpur, uh, where I received the um, best student awards. Um, I did my PhD in 2010 from Princeton um, with electrical engineering majors. CS uh, minors and affiliation with math. Um, and I got some awards there. After that, I spent four and a half years at at and Research Labs, where I was working on topics in networking and machine learning. Um, and since January 2015, I've been here. And I'm still waiting for getting some awards here. Um, and I have other. Um, adjunct appointments at a bunch of places, which I also mentioned here. <coughs> OK, so a brief about um, the Google Scholar profile, per se, uh, of how the track has been over the years. Um, 2015 Jan is kind of when I joined Purdue. And um, thanks to Purdue uh, and my past experience at AT&T, things have been going well so far. Um, so I have about 87 journal papers, 97 conference papers, accepted uh, 20 US patents, and one book chapter. Uh, I have received a journal best paper award in 2017, um, and a conference best paper award in 2018, all of them after joining Purdue. 
Um, in addition, I have presentation awards, and I'm writing a research uh, monograph, which should be out um, likely end of the semester. Okay. So in terms of research areas, uh, we are mainly working with aspects of big data. Now, big data involves multiple aspects. One of them, as you all know, is the aspects of machine learning, where you have a lot of data around us. You need to make some autonomous decisions. You need to mine data or things of that. But other aspect is your data will be stored on the servers. So with the distributed data comes a lot more challenges of how to store, how to access, how to process. So that is, in summary, the type of things I work on. So um, and how to store, how to access those topics are traditionally like networking aspects. Um, and how to process and how to make decisions come under AI. So in, that is essentially why, in summary, the types of topic are combination of machine learning, networking, and cloud computing. But even in networking, cloud computing, it's basically how to, ac how to process and uh, access the big data. Okay. These are some of the uh, detailed topics uh, which I'm not going to go over. I'm also working on uh, autonomous vehicles and smart grid type aspects, which are also related in a way uh, to big data because vehicles, autonomous vehicles have, are expected to increase as the days go by. Okay. Just to go a bit detailed about some of the projects, so I'm using this quad chart, which I kind of used a few years ago to explain uh, the research in the EC primary committee, I guess. Um, so the first topic uh, that we'll go in detail is uh, related to cloud storage. And um, Abhi might know this was the topic I presented during my job talk here. Um, so the cloud storage essentially is um, all of us have used Dropbox, Google Drive, Box, things like that. We put our data on the cloud, but then when we access it, we want to get it accessed fast. But there are many challenges with that. When you're storing data up on the servers, you need some redundancy because the disks fail all the time. Now, if you have redundancy, that gives you new opportunities of where to access the data from. And that problem is very hard. All the file systems today, like Quick File System, Tahoe, Hadoop, uh, Facebook, and all the companies, Google File System, all of them use some redundancy. But we need some efficient techniques of getting the data from there. Faster, the better. Okay. So we have been working in this type of space to come up with efficient algorithms to get the data from the servers as fast as we can. Some of the, sorry impacts that we have achieved, we have demonstrated that we can reduce the latency. Latency is the amount of time you take to get the data by a multiple of five as compared to current implementations on the current file systems. In addition to this um, improvement of latency, just uh, playing with the optimization, we can do efficient caching strategies. Caching is when you have a Dropbox or Google Drive folder, you put some of the things on your local host. If you can manage that local host well, we can reduce the latency further by 25% as compared to existing things on Ceph caching module. So we beat most of the state of the art caching systems by doing a fundamental analysis of the storage systems. And the overall vision is we need to come up with an overall system for distributed file storage systems that care about latency, reliability, and the price of access. And in order to care about all of these aspects, you need to understand the system end to end. Local parts of the systems are not sufficient. So that has been the vision. And this figure is kind of saying you the different tuning knobs that you have that you need to consider all of them together. The second project I'm going to talk briefly about is on ride sharing. Uber and Lyft have been increasing over the years. There have been a lot of demand of them, and that is going to increase. Uh, the personal vehicles uh, will, are expected to reduce as the autonomy kicks in more and more. 
With that perspective, we need efficient algorithms for matching the passengers and the vehicles. Okay. So even though Uber and Lyft are doing their jobs, their algorithms are not known, and who knows whether they're doing an uh, a perfect job. So our aim in research is to come up with more efficient algorithms. One of the things that I'm going to explain is we came up with a new methodology. Like in Uber Pool, they take a passenger from the source to the destination. What if you have two riders? Rider one is taken by vehicle one to here, and then this vehicle was going to be and then pick up the vehicle, uh, the rider one, two. So what is happening is the passenger can get dropped in the middle to be picked by another vehicle. That happens commonly when we take the buses and trains. Why can't we have that in the ride sharing systems? We implemented those type of strategies using machine learning, and we showed that contrary to what people think about the negatives of that, this was very much helpful. Um, the other type of things we are working is the concept of reinforcement learning, which is autonomous decision making. Um, the concept of reinforcement learning is you have a state, you take some action, and then you get some reward. And how to manage with that is another thing that we are working on. Um, some of the other things with machine learning that we are working is you are given a missing data, like the Netflix rankings, or uh, where people do not give you the rating of certain movies. How do you fill in those data? Um, without going over detail, I'll just show you a small video. So we took this video of the YouTube where a gun is being fired. You see the hand, gun, smoke, and the bullet. We removed 90% of the pixels here. Okay, So you get almost nothing if you remove 90% of the pixels in the data. And our algorithm can reconstruct this thing with 90% of the missing data. So essentially, you don't even need 10% of the data in most of the images, and our algorithms could have that much impact, which you can see is an efficient way of data compression in a way. OK. Um, the research here could not be complete without all the uh, faculty collaborators uh, that, were, uh, that I had at Purdue um, with a combination of IE and ECE faculty. And thanks to the Purdue EFC programs, that we could also go to uh, other collaborations with other engineering programs um, and uh, also other colleges beyond uh, engineering. And special thanks to all the other faculty mentors uh, who have been helping me to go through the procedure. In terms of teaching, I have mainly been teaching the courses of stochastic processes, um, undergrad and grad, as well as machine learning. Uh, I've also been teaching courses on scheduling in computer systems, which includes a combination of approximation algorithms, stochastic processes, and machine learning, uh, and combination of uh, them for efficient scheduling and planning. Um, so that's all I have. Thanks to uh, uh, special thanks to all the students that I have worked with at Purdue uh, and elsewhere. So we have graduated four PhD students from the group. Um, there are seven PhD students at this point. Three of them are co-advised um, with some of the faculty in the room. Um, I've had postdocs, um, mentored master research, and have multiple undergrads in the group, thanks to all the Purdue programs, including Summer Stay, SURF, the VIP program, which, which is started in the ECE and has been a, a great program. Uh, sorry, Purdue. Uh, IE's senior design project uh, course, and um, some other programs on that uh, sign. And then there is a Purdue Horizons program. I don't know if uh, you know about that. That's for first generation um, college students, as well as minority. So I've also been um, faculty mentor for that, and I've supervised uh, some students through that program. So uh, that's mainly about. Uh, the student side of mentoring side of things. Um, that's all I have, and I would look forward to your questions. We have a few minutes for questions, so I'll bring the mic around if uh, people have questions. with uh, you know, 
patenting your algorithms. Uh, how has that whole interaction worked out? Because I can imagine there could be a lot of interest. Yeah, as I just mentioned, I have 20 uh, US patents. I think 14 of them are granted at this point. Um, the issue with, as such, algorithms is that algorithms are harder to patent. So we do not get like the data completion algorithm. We cannot patent it. But because it's a standard type of, means it's an alternate minimization type algorithms. So some of the algorithms are harder to patent. While when you talk about this distributed storage setup, where you basically say, these are the flexible knobs we can expose and uh, set up a problem like that, that technology with the algorithm can be patented. So that is essentially how we have been approaching. Um, so we have mainly uh, the patents around networking uh, side of things. Uh, not really on the machine learning side of things. Any other questions? I don't have a question, but I have a comment. Uh, uh, Vanit has been. Uh, I'm. Okay, uh, I'm. I'm Bharat Bhargava in computer science department, and I've been here. Uh, for a very long time, including in electrical engineering. Vanit has been um, very helpful to uh, s more than four or five of my PhD students, and I invite him to serve on committee, and he was very instrumental in getting a uh, multi-million dollar uh, DARPA grant. Uh, he's um, so unselfish that he's willing to help me with any projects that I have, particularly the new one that we started on f with Ford Motor Company. So I think uh, if you're a student, you want to get involved with him. Uh, if you're faculty, you want to get involved with him. And if you're the dean, you want to promote him. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Any other questions? Or, thank you.